Well, he's the man that's got everybody saying L.A. Knight. He is the United States champion of the WWE, and he's a part of the Friday Night SmackDown roster, which has its a debut on its new home, the USA Network, this Friday, September the 13th, and he's joining us right now. The megastar is with us. L.A. Knight, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great. That was a heck of a talk up right there. Uh, you talk about our new home, USA, kind of an old home, because I'm telling you, uh, USA for me was the place where I, I watched everything when I was growing up as a kid. So, uh, you know, whether it was Monday Night Raw or whatever else, everything seemed to happen on USA and now SmackDown coming to USA. It just feels right. It feels like home. It does feel like a homecoming. Like I remember when Raw went away for a little while from the USA Network and then came back to it and they had that big homecoming episode stone cold was stunning everybody it just feels like the place <laughs> where wrestling's supposed to happen and talk about it I mean absolutely you as a long-term fan of this industry and this business to be on the usa network coming into it as the united states champion like what does that what does that feel like for you well i mean especially you consider the namesake uh what the usa network U.S. champion, yeah. yeah. So uh, when, you, when you think about that, yeah, I, I'd say it's rather fitting. It's pretty cool to uh, roll into our new home as, uh, I guess, kind of one of the um, standard bearers, if you will. Uh, so pretty cool accolade right there. Now, you won that championship at SummerSlam this year. And I think when people talk about SummerSlam 2024 and they go back and watch it, yes, the main event with Cody and Solo had a lot of pomp and circumstance, as a main event should. But when you talk about Bell to Bell, the best match on the card was you versus Logan Paul. Um, from a psychology standpoint, from an aerial athletic standpoint, um, just from the few that y'all had building up to it. When you won that United States championship, uh, the referee counted three, and there you are in full of a stadium full of people winning that title after tearing the house down, in my opinion. What was that feeling like, the immediate moments afterward? Straight adrenaline. Um, nothing else, nothing mattered. I mean, if you saw the way that I just popped up when that three happened, uh, is unusual because usually when that three comes down, it's almost like relief of like, oh man, I, I'm gassed. Like, you know, <laughs> like, give me, give me just a second to breathe. Give me a second to, to you know, kind of think and, and, and kind of register everything that just happened for the last 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, however long it is. But with this one, it was just straight up adrenaline. The whole place exploded and it was just like, give me that belt. And, uh, and, and it was time to just take my moment. And I don't think uh, it took me a little while to come down after that. Uh, and when I came down, then I started to feel stuff. Then I started to feel, you know, the little, stuff on the head and the back and all that kind of stuff because man the, the, this business a lot of people don't don't give it the credit that, that it deserves and i don't even know if this is credit this is just reality i mean we get beat up in there so yeah um it, th that adrenaline hits and, and you don't really feel it for a little bit and when it comes down it's just like okay yeah give me about three or four advil and uh, we'll, we'll see how it's there for the night <laughs> but you become Mr. SummerSlam in some ways, right? I mean, that huge battle royal win the year before, this year a championship win. I don't know what SummerSlam 25 is going to have for the megastar. Man, don't go coin a phrase here. Might end up having to be Mr. SummerSlam. Who knows? Never been one before. But, uh, yeah, I mean, now that you think about it, um, hell, what, what the, the Slim Jim battle royal last year, uh, the U.S. championship this year, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows what SummerSlam 25 could bring along? Uh, at this point, you know what? I, I took over the United States Championship. You got to think about, well, maybe I take over the world. Who knows? But we'll see what we'll see what lies ahead. You know, it's, it could very well happen. Now, I want to ask you this. You, you may or may not remember this. You and I have actually shared a stage before years ago in Los Angeles, California, with my man Booker T in a live event. We had like a live podcast. And, and on that night, it was Kurt yes. Angle. It was Rob Van Dam, yep. David Arquette. And uh, you, as a different name, but L.A. Knight's still the same. And what struck me yep. about that night was here are all these, you know, Hall of Fame guys, big level movie stars. You come up after all of them and you had the crowd within 10 seconds, literally in 10 seconds, in the palm of your hand, repeating all your catchphrases. And you're almost moving the crowd like a great <laughs> MC would, like a great rapper knows how to get the crowd engaged. When did you discover yeah. that, yes, I might have the mechanics inside the ring. I might understand who I am as a character, but I also have this mouthpiece that so many people wish that they did have in wrestling. A lot of the times that's the hard thing is to get the promo down, yeah. get the character down. When did you realize that you had that? 
Well, first of all, let me back up and just say that I'm uh, on my phone right now, and I, I could not even make you out at first, but now I, yes, completely. Uh, and that's so funny that you mentioned that, but yeah, I remember that night. I remember everything about that. And, uh, I, you know, it, it's funny. People always ask me like, when, when did you think that you were good? And, 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 and I don't, I don't know. Like I, I always kind of focused on the promo thing. Cause for me, it was like, those were the guys that I always liked. So when I first got in the business, I was like, that's what I want to be good at. And then not that the wrestling is, the wrestling needs to be as good. But like, for me, it was like how do I prioritize that? And you don't really get a lot of practice in that in the independence. Like, it's not like guys like, all right, yeah, let's do a promo practice or anything. So for me, it was just kind of like anywhere I could fit it in. If I was on a little independent show, I would just be like, Hey, can I just grab the mic for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, whatever, and just go out there and say whatever. And so I would try and make it a point to just go and do my thing. And I would say, man, not to, not to, to, you know, blow smoke up my own keister here, but, um, I would say within that first year of me being in the business, I kind of had a bit of a rap where it was like, I, I knew how to get the people behind me to some degree. I didn't have it to the same level that I have it now where it's like, I know how to kind of, you know, I, I can say the right things at the right time. And, and, you know, I, I can get the, the cat. I didn't have like the catchphrases and all that stuff. Um, that was kind of stuff that was developed through the years where it was just like, I, right, well, what do I say in my normal real life? Okay. This, okay. Well, let's bring that in and let's do this. And does this fit? Okay, cool. And a lot of it was just kind of happy accidents. So I guess I kind of knew I was good at it maybe in that first year, but it was just on top of that, it was like, well, I can't just, if I just said to myself, oh, well, I'm good now. I can just hang back. I, I never progress. So it's kind of that same thing where it's like, I've always been in good shape, but for me, it's like, I always want more. I always want better. I always need to continue progressing and evolving. And so whether it's in the ring, in the gym, on the microphone, whatever it is, I'm just always looking for more and more and more. So even though I knew I kind of had something early on, I'm still, I'm still digging all the time. Just how can I make it better? Well, man, you know, you, you captured the WWE universe, the pro wrestling crowd and the entertainment landscape as it is. And uh, you're going to continue to do that on the USA network with the debut of Friday night SmackDown this Friday. I have about 20 seconds left with you. So I just have to ask you real quick. Uh -oh. not, who is the Let's goat, go. not who is the goat, but who is your goat? Who is your greatest of all time? For me, it's the macho man, Randy Savage. Who is your goat? I can't, I, I, I can't name one for me. It's always been, it's always been four, uh, four who kind of tie for it. Um, and, and, and so it's going to be Austin rock Hogan and flair who let go of all the personal, sure. uh, you know, whatever whatever all the personal outside stuff is. Cause for me, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that, that the latter two have been doing as far as the craziness in their personal lives, but from a professional level as performers in the ring and in this business, Austin rock flair Hogan, hundred percent hands down. The WWE United States champion, the, the, the future King of the world, but right now he's going to be the King of the USA network. L that's a right. Yeah. Is what everybody's saying. I appreciate you for joining us this morning. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, man. That was great. Of course, man. Thank you.